good evening class 8 so we are going to start with chemistry today formally starting with the first chapter that is matter now to talk about chemistry now, as you know science has been divided into three streams and chemistry is the branch of science which deals with matter now what are the things of matter that the subject deals with it deals with the structure its composition its properties so all that you study uh, in chemistry actually is about matter now where do you find matter if you look around whether it's living or non-living everything is made up of matter So, matter, if we zero down to what actually matter is in the language of science, how can you define it? Matter is something or anything which occupies space by space. Why? Because it has mass. That is, it is made occupy space and has mass apart from this it can be perceived by our senses either we can see it or we can touch it we can feel it so all these conditions are fulfilled by matter perceived by our senses Okay, to, uh, for example, if you take a balloon and blow it, come on, do it. You are sitting at home. If you have a balloon, if you don't have a made balloon, you can make out of a rough paper. Okay, blow it. So, when you're blowing it, what is happening? The balloon is inflating. Why is it inflating? Because it is taking up the space. Why is it taking up space? Because it has some mass. Okay, now if I switch on the fan, what will happen? I can feel the pages flying or you know I can feel the air blowing so why is it so because it is also air matter which is being perceived by our senses okay so you can also very easily feel matter when you are you know riding a motorbike you can see the air pushing on your face and it's striking on your face so therein matter also provides some sort of resistance or an opposite force okay so how did uh, what is now matter made up of we talked about matter now let us discuss what matter is made up of discussing about what matter is made up of let us first uh, start with what the ancient uh, philosophers thought about it so the greek philosophers the ancient philosophers thought that the matter is made up of fire water air and earth Okay, later on uh, their beliefs changed and they zeroed down to a theory called five elements. So they now thought that it is made up of sky, air, fire, water and earth. These are the five elements with which they felt each and every matter is made up of. Uh, to proceed further, Maharshi Kanad, he was a very renowned Maharshi, a learned person. So he... Uh, discovered or he found out or he gave us the theory that matter is made up of very small particles and he called those particles Parmanu. Okay. Later on John Dalton gave us the actual theory of matter saying that all matter is made up of small uh, particles called atoms. So this is what we still did follow that all matters are made up of atoms. Now this atom are very small particles um, which can take part in a chemical reaction. When something new is being formed, they are participating in forming that new in a chemical equation. But in reaction, but it cannot exist independently. Right. Now atoms combine in some, uh, in combine to form molecules. Molecules are also small, but they can exist independently. Now, a molecule of a matter can be formed by different number of atoms depending on the substance or the element. 
okay some may be formed by two atoms combining some three some may be one only okay so whatever it is the atoms form molecules molecules are the smallest particle by which a substance can exist independently okay both the particles atoms as well as molecules are very very small we cannot see it okay with our bare eyes so you to let us get an idea the how small it can be okay so for that take a drop of water and imagine how many particles are there in it you cannot so now i'm giving you the number and you take the water and try to imagine so many particles in it you will get some rough idea how very small they are so there may be roughly 10 to the power of 21 particles of matter in that single drop of water so now you can feel or at least imagine how very small these particles are now, a matter has a particular way of behavior or its own characteristics. Let us talk about them now. So let us discuss the characteristics of matter in details. So first, particles are very small. We just now discussed how small they are. We can also prove this how small they are by a small experiment. Here I have taken copper sulfate and 10 milliliter water. I have added copper sulfate crystals in this 10 milliliter water and you can see this nice blue solution okay now here I, you can see I have taken four beakers A, B, C and D each having 50 milliliter of water in it okay now from uh, the solution that I have made I will add 5 milliliter of the solution to beaker A okay now from beaker A I will take some solution 5 milliliter after stirring and pour it into beaker B. Again I will stir beaker, beaker B. From beaker B now I will take the solution and pour it in beaker C. Again stir it. From C now I will pour it into beaker D. So what do we observe as we do this? We see that the color has become faint. Okay, why? Because of the successive dilution. Okay, we are going on diluting it. So therefore, the color of the solution has become faint. The small crystal of blue vitriol or copper sulfate that we had used to start with, it has not changed its property. The nature of the particle remained right from the first beaker to the last beaker. So I had taken only small crystals of this blue vitriol, okay, but these small crystals had so many particles that it could color uh, so, many, so much of water and it also showed the property of it till the last uh, beaker. So I had taken only small crystals of this blue vitriol, okay, but these small crystals had so many particles that it could color uh, so many so much of water and it also showed the property of it till the last uh, beaker okay now we move on to the next property that is particles have interparticle space to prove this i have taken a little uh, some amount of water and i have marked it and i am pouring some or adding some salt to it stir it now we notice the level of change what did i notice what do you notice there is no change in the level or the amount of water taken so what happened to the salt the salt has placed itself between the water molecules that is the empty spaces that was there between the water molecules the salt molecules have placed themselves so therefore by this we can prove that particles of matter have space between them. Next characteristics, 
particles of matter are in constant random motion. Random, random means haphazard. Right, sometimes left, again right. So there's no regular motion. So this actually by a uh, very renowned scientist, Robert Brown. So what did he, how did he find out about it? How did he prove it? He uh, observed pollen grains on water using a magnifying glass. So what did he find? That the pollen grains were constantly moving from here to there on the surface of the water. So from that he deduced that it is because the water molecules are in constant motion and is colliding with the pollen grains making it move. So by this experiment he deduced that all particles in the matter are in a haphazard random motion. haphazard random motion of the suspended particles whether on the surface of liquid or in air is called Brownian movement. So how can you draw that? Suppose you take a particle, okay, so it is pushed here, then it may be pushed this side, okay, then it may be pushed again here, so anyway, so this movement of the particles have as a random movement of the particle is called Brownian movement as because Robert Brown discovered or told us about this. Okay? Now the last is the particles of matter attract each other. So one particle attracts the other particle that is called the interparticular force or intermolecular attraction. Now this may vary from substance to substance. It is not all the strength of the force is not same. And this is the reason why I have taken a chalk and I can easily break it. Why? Because the force of attraction between the particles here is less. But if I try to do the same thing with this metal rod, I will not be able to. Why? Because the force of attraction between the particles is much, much more in this metal rod. Okay? 